In a previous video, we've learned about the pitch stability derivative, CM alpha, and we learned that that has to be less than zero for an aircraft to be stable. But the natural question then is, uh, what's a good amount for that pitch stability derivative? You know, how negative does that need to be? And so we're going to learn about that, or we'll get some insight by learning about the neutral point and static margin of an aircraft. So I'm gonna draw an aircraft here uh, from the side, and we're going to uh, put a, a fuselage reference line here. And we've learned previously that we can um, compute the forces, the aerodynamic forces acting at the, at the center of gravity, which I've shown here. So we can resolve those about the center of gravity. And uh, so we're gonna have the lift, drag, and pitching moment on there, but we're gonna draw it at an angle of attack. Uh, let's say that we're at some angle of attack alpha, so V infinity. It's coming in from this direction, and so lift is perpendicular to that. Drag is aligned with V infinity, and uh, and then we've got some pitching moment m acting about the center of gravity. Okay, um, so just like we learned with um, with airfoils and also with wings, there's a location on the aircraft, uh, not necessarily on the aircraft, but here in this space somewhere that. Um, that is called an aerodynamic center. At that point, the, the definition of the aerodynamic center is it's the location where the pitching moment does not change with angle of attack. Now, the, the pitching moment that we have written right here will change with angle of attack, and we've seen that through our previous uh, developments. But uh, there's some location here that uh, where the pitching moment will not change with angle of attack. So I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to draw this in another color and just uh, put a plus sign there. Uh, we're gonna call that the neutral point. Now, the neutral point is uh, is equivalent to the aerodynamic center. Uh, the aerodynamic center uh, of the entire aircraft. So, so for an airfoil, we call that the aerodynamic center, and even for the wing, uh, but for some reason on aircraft, we call it the neutral point. It's the same thing. It's that location where the uh, pitching moment does not change with um, uh, with angle of attack. Okay, and that neutral point is located, we're going to say, behind the aerodynamic center here uh, by a distance of L, N, P. And, uh, and it can also be above the uh, fuselage re reference um, uh, line by we're going to call that h sub n p okay uh, and again we're just using a our coordinate system where we're using positive behind the center of gravity to develop this analysis so let's try the pitching moment about the neutral point if we have the pitching moment at the aerodynamic center if we have the aerodynamic forces and moments at the excuse me at the center of gravity uh, we can calculate what they are at the neutral point if we knew where the neutral point was. So let's write that equation. So the pitching moment at the neutral point is equal to the pitching moment at the center of gravity. So we don't subscript that. When it's not subscripted, that means that it's at the center of gravity. And, uh, and then we can move the lift and drag forces from the center of gravity to the neutral point. And so what, what we'll get is uh, we've got the distance to the neutral point times uh, L cosine alpha. Notice that lift is rotated by cosine alpha and uh, drag by sine alpha. So that those are the components that are uh, uh, perpendicular to L and P, you know, if we were to move these forces over to that point. Um, and now if we, and those are multiplied by this distance here. But then we, we can also uh, have a change in height. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to lie on the fuselage reference line, uh, which we've chosen to just, uh, pass through the center of gravity for this example, uh, but it can also be offset by this height uh, n p. So, uh, so let's write that. So that will still be the lift and drag. So it'd be h n p times um, the components. There will be l sine alpha uh, minus drag times the cosine of alpha. Okay. So, uh, so this is the pitching moment at the neutral point given the pitching moment at the uh, center of gravity and the lift and drag forces. Now, we're gonna use small angle approximation and also recognize that some of these terms are small compared to others. For example, uh, the height of the neutral point uh, or the distance that that aerodynamic center sits um, 
vertically offset from the center of gravity is usually small for most aircraft. So this is a really small number compared to uh, the, the distance that it is from the center of gravity. So this is a small number, and then we've also got a sine alpha. Angle of attack is usually small. So here we have two numbers that are very small. Uh, and then also uh, the height times the drag is a very small number. Um, and, uh, and so we're actually going to neglect this entire, uh, this entire term back here because it's very small compared to the first term. And then uh, the first term, we can look at drag times the sine of alpha uh, compared to lift times the cosine alpha. Again, that's very small, drag sine of alpha. So we're going to neglect that term. And so uh, what we're left with after we apply the small angle approximation is that the moment at the neutral point is equal to moment plus LNP uh, times L. Once we plug in the small angle approximation for cosine alpha, we just get one. So uh, this is our this is our approximation, and I should put a little uh, approximation sign there. This is approximately equal to uh, to this expression here. And then of course we like to non-dimensionalize this. So we're going to divide this by one half rho v infinity squared times the wing area and the mean chord of the main wing. And that's how we non-dimensionalize a global pitching moment on the aircraft. And so um, what that gives us is, uh, is uh, the pitching moment coefficient at the neutral point is equal to the pitching moment at the center of gravity, the coefficient plus LNP over C bar wing times the lift coefficient. So that's the non-dimensional form. Okay, so um, so we've developed the expression for the pitching moment at the neutral point uh, or the aerodynamic center, but we haven't applied the definition of the aerodynamic center or neutral point yet. And the definition of that is that the change in the pitching moment at the neutral point with respect to alpha is equal to zero. So let's take the derivative of the pitching uh, the the moment um, at the neutral point with respect to alpha, and set that equal to zero. So that would be uh, Cm alpha, the derivative of the pitching moment at the uh, center of gravity with respect to alpha, plus LNP over C bar W times the lift slope, Cl alpha. And now, uh, when we set that equal to zero, we can actually uh, solve for LNP over C bar wing. And uh, what we get there once we solve for that is that it's equal to minus Cm alpha over Cl alpha. Okay, so this is a very important ratio, uh, negative Cm alpha over Cl alpha. Um, this is the, the distance to the neutral point from the center of gravity divided by the uh, mean chord of the wing, and we actually often will give this a symbol sigma, and uh, that sigma stands for what's called the static margin. Okay, so the static margin, this is the definition of the static margin, and uh, this is basically what everybody uses in the industry for the definition of static margin. Now, obviously, you can see that there are some simplifications built into this. Uh, you know, we, we assumed that the vertical offset was small, and uh, we used small angle approximation for sines and cosines, uh, but this is a pretty good approximation for most aircraft. This is uh, and so this has become the, the definition of the static margin is the ratio of the, the change in pitching moment with respect to alpha divided by the lift, uh, the change in lift with respect to alpha. Uh, you take the negative of that, and by the way, this is the pitching moment at the origin or, or at your center of gravity. And, um, and, uh, and then this LNP then is the distance from the center of gravity back to the, uh, to the aerodynamic center. So we can learn a, a few things um, by looking at this in a little bit more detail. So for example, we know that CM alpha has to be negative for, uh, for a stable aircraft, and we know that CL alpha is positive um, for aircraft. And so because of that, LNP will always be positive. Now we've got, a, you know, we've got the negative CM alpha and the negative out front, those two multiply. And so the left-hand side has to always be positive. We know that C bar W uh, is positive. And so that means LNP, of a stable aircraft is positive. So let's write that down. LNP is greater than zero uh, for a stable aircraft. Okay, so that means that 
the that the aerodynamic center has to be behind the center of gravity, or in other words, the center of gravity needs to be in front of the aerodynamic center of this aircraft or the neutral point uh, in order for the aircraft to be stable. So that's a very important takeaway here, that the aerodynamic center always needs to be behind the center of gravity for this to be stable in pitch, okay? Um, now, uh, for the but now the question comes up, well, well how... How far does that need to be, or or what does this magnitude of CM alpha need to be? It turns out that there's a rule of thumb that's been around for about 100 years that that static margin should be somewhere um, that you want uh, your sigma to be uh, greater than about 5% or 0.05, okay? So um, that that's simply a rule of thumb, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that here, rule of thumb. Uh, that you want your static margin to be greater than 5%. And, uh, and if it is, then you'll have a good pitch stability. You'll have good handling qualities. Now, this isn't actually completely true. Your handling qualities of the aircraft, there's a couple of problems with looking at it this way. Um, one of those is that, uh, that we've divided the neutral point by C bar wing. The C bar wing, actually, the reason we, we've divided it here, the reason it shows up in this equation at all, is because that's what we chose to non-dimensionalize our pitching moments. Well, it turns out that, uh, that the dynamics of an aircraft do not necessarily scale with the, uh, with the mean chord of the main wing. And so we're using that here to get our percentage, you know, your LNP divided by C bar in a percentage. So this is the the percentage uh, behind the center of gravity that the aerodynamic sits in percent of the mean chord, right? That's what this ratio means. And, uh, and it turns out that the mean chord actually doesn't affect the dynamics of the aircraft, uh, or it doesn't scale. The dynamics don't scale with the mean chord. And so that's why this is really just a rule of thumb, uh, that 5% is about what you want, but that's not really true. And, and there, are, there are aircraft out there that have a whole myriad of different uh, values for static margin that have good handling qualities, and that's because this is not a direct uh, representation of, of, uh, of what creates a good, um, a good aircraft uh, that has good uh, pitch qualities or longitudinal qualities, okay? So that's one thing we need to be aware of. And then um, the, the other thing to be aware of is that this entire analysis uh, is, uh, is what we call a static analysis. So we're just looking at these derivatives with respect to alpha, uh, but we're looking at the static stability of the aircraft, and it turns out that that static stability is is uh, in some ways less important than dynamic stability. So the pitch dynamics uh, are more important, and those are related to uh, not only the the aerodynamics of the aircraft, but also the inertia that you have about the y-axis. Uh, and so, uh, for example, uh, what we've shown here is that you know if CM alpha is negative then this this aircraft will rotate back down if it if it gets a disturbance in positive alpha then it will rotate back down uh, to get rid of that disturbance so it will uh, so it will uh, return back to its trim point and that that's very important but the rate at which it returns back to that trim point depends on the moment of inertia about the y axis so it depends on how your mass is distributed about your center of gravity uh, whether or not it's going to return quickly or or slowly. And so those types of things are more important, uh, or maybe I should say equally as important as the the stability. And so we'll talk about those later, the, the, the dynamics of this aircraft and how to uh, measure whether or not this has good dynamic behavior. Now, one last thing I want to point out is that technically speaking, this is what's called the stick fixed neutral point and static margin. And uh, that's because we've assumed that the elevator is uh, held at a constant deflection throughout this analysis. We assume that we did not change the the elevator. And there are other ways to look at this where you actually do allow the elevator to uh, change um, in this analysis. And so anyway, technically speaking, this is the stick fixed neutral point and static margin. But that's what you, people usually mean when they just say uh, neutral point or static margin. Usually they're referring to the stick fixed version.